Hey, everybody. This is Sean here for this week's Shaper Sessions. Uh, this week, we got a fun show for you. This week, we're talking about hybrid cutting, origin, and track saw. So uh, we've got a lot to get to on this one. We've got uh, the track saw behind us and an uh, interesting little project we're going to get into later. But first, we're going to go through some slides, a little bit of the background of uh, how we approach the idea of hybrid cutting and using origin alongside other tools. We'll switch straight to the slides and get right into it, try to get them out of the way and get into the project. We're all familiar, or maybe you're not, familiar with origin itself, which brings an incredible amount of precision to a power tool that's handheld and can be stowed away. So with that in mind, we're always looking for ways that we can really build upon that precision and make it the most efficient and really build upon the tools you have in your shop. So with Origin, we have a lot of flexibility. It's not like a canned process. You don't predetermine everything and then step back and watch it go. You basically can change your mind and adapt as you go. So with that in mind, if you ever encounter anything where you may want to, say, do a lot of material removal or cut straight lines or cut deeper than Origin's capable of cutting on its own, it would make sense to grab the appropriate tool for the job. So we're excited to really make Origin working alongside other tools more than the sum of its parts. It really uh, brings more value to your whole pre-existing workshop and workflows you're probably already familiar with. So here's a, just a quick one. We shot a video recently while we are in Germany of doing edge banding with Origin. So you know, traditionally, edge banding has been you know, massive machines, uh, a lot of expense, and big gantry CNCs or you know, uh, elaborate workflows to get the kind of precise shapes you're looking for. So, Combining Origin with a uh, little portable edge bander, we can take care of cutting you know, elaborate organic shapes and precisely manipulating them, and then following up with these other stowable tools. This one is a pistol example, where we can perform edge bands all in something that you, know, you can put on the back of your truck and uh, go on to a, another job site and do something else there. And that's you know, basically the footprint of what, it, what was required to edge band that, that little table there. Then we can look at examples where we need to cut deeper than Origin's maximum travel, which is 1.7 inches. So there may be two reasons for doing that. A, Origin, you know, the stock you're cutting may literally be deeper than 1.7 inches, or B, maybe using a, a small cutter, or you just don't want to spend time doing, you know, like five or six passes and a finish pass to get down to that depth. So it may make sense to kind of use Origin in a hybrid way where you basically treat the first cut as a pattern. And so here we can see we're, we're cutting a uh, pretty elaborate path into this live edge table to get rid of some old dead stock. This is Suave, another friend of ours. And he's going to then follow up with a little jigsaw and trim off the remainder of that, which then leaves that top cut he performed with Origin as effectively a pattern on that live, uh, live edge that he can then follow with a, a much bigger router with a pattern bit. So then that gives you the ability to get depths much deeper than you would with Origin alone. But also you can, you know, you're, you're going to get move a lot of material quickly. So by using Origin alongside these other tools, they become more capable, Origin becomes more capable. And that's an area we're really interested in here. So you can see those now. We cut the same path on both sides of this live edge, and then we're able to bring them together precisely. And you know, that's an example of something people use for like resin pours or just these big tables where they need uh, that kind of precision over these larger areas. Next one, so if you're doing large inlays, once again, Origin can trim out all that material on its own. You know, we can install cutters up to one inch in diameter. Often we will, you know, use like a half inch diameter or three inch, uh, three, sorry, three quarter inch diameter cutter to really remove a lot of material with Origin, and that's entirely appropriate. But there are other options there, right? We can use Origin's precision to go around with, say, the stock quarter inch cutter and get that edge exactly dimensioned as we want. This is a COC. This happens to be a rectangle, but it could be an elaborate sort of organic shape. So you can cut that with the precision of origin and then follow up with, like in this example, a sled with a much more powerful, I think this is the 1400 hand router with a bigger cutter, and you can clear out that material very quickly. People have experimented with a lot of options. Some people even do things like they'll cut slots through their pocket, so Origin remains supported throughout that operation, and then chisel out the uh, material that's been cut, ready to be released, and then use Origin for doing just the finishing pass on the bottom. 
all sorts of different approaches. Either way, we're, we're excited about seeing you know, efficiency in small workshops or on a job site and the accuracy of Origin along with it. So now we're looking at the actual project we're going to look at today. So this is a uh, just small shop storage and we're going to combine Origin and the track saw to create the details you see. There's a few rounded corners there, little handles. There's actually quite a few little interesting hardware details we'll get into, but we don't want to use Origin to cut these massive straight lines. You know, we could. This is three quarter inch ply, and that would be, you know, three passes and a finished pass to get it nice and accurate. A finished pass is just trimming a very tiny sliver of material at the end of your, to get the final dimension after leaving a little extra material on your cuts uh, with an offset of like say 0.01 inches. That is how we're going to use Origin. That's how we're going to get the most out of our track saw and Origin. We'll come over to the other camera here and just show you what we're talking about. So down here, this is basically the, it's just shop storage. It's a simple little, you know, basic utility box. Uh, we've added some little, uh, I wanted very low profile. Let's see if you can see there. Uh, very low profile wheels. So, uh, you know, a lot of them can end up being pretty massive. So these are just little, um, show the prototype here, uh, just using regular uh, skateboard wheels. These are very hard ones, so they're not going to, you know, distort and deflect. Uh, but we'll get into the process of making these later, even cutting uh, aluminium with origin. So this is, this is a really cool, you know, way to uh, save on vertical space when making something like this. But the basic idea is, uh, you know, Traxor uh, performs most of the heavy lifting here. Origin takes care of the precision and the positioning of all the little details. Um, you might be able to see in here. Yeah, so the hardware we're holding it together with is these little uh, Lamello Cabino. Let's see if you can see that. Uh, they're little hardware inserts that just drop in and then it screws out into this other little uh, insert. So it becomes kind of pseudo knockdown uh, in that they, they can be taken apart and put back together a few times, but it's very strong and uh, it's a great way of, you know, creating a uh, very accurate shape nice and quickly. So uh, we'll then cut back here to the main bench and look at what we mean by a track saw. So uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with a track saw. This is the uh, TS-55 that enables us to cut, uh, I don't know what its maximum depth is, but a lot more than three quarters of an inch. Um, so this is the eight foot plus a little bit uh, track. And basically it enables us to get a lot of the features you would commonly find in a, uh, you know, a, a proper, table saw. So uh, instead of taking up a massive area of your shop with a table saw, with a little bit of effort, uh, precisely laying out where you need to make your cuts and a track saw, uh, you'll notice this aluminium guide lets us cut you know, very straight uh, over long distances. Uh, we can get a lot done rather than doing multiple passes with Origin. So once again, Origin's excellent for the precise work. It's excellent for manipulating offsets and uh, getting hardware to install exactly where you want it. But long straight cuts, why not use the right tool for the job? So we're going to go to uh, the slides again, and we're going to quickly look at the process of how we're going to move. Oh yeah, that's just the, my uh, train wreck of a shop with some storage in it. We're going to look at how we're going to move through this. So there's the little hardware I was describing, the Lamello Cabino 8, the little M6 insert. And you can see that, how that's held together. We have that file up on Shaper Hub. If you want to install one of these yourself, all the info is there for that. So this is the layout of the whole project. So you'll start to see some of the elements you saw through the camera looking at the actual model. So on the left-hand side, we have the two ends. Then we have a few of the shelves in the middle. The little four elements there are the wheel supports and then the base on the right. Now you'll see there's little details here that are the slots for the Lamello hardware. So this is looking at the 3D model in Fusion. I actually composed this all in Illustrator. You can export it out of Fusion, but in Illustrator, these, see the pocket area there? So that's the gray area. That's, that's material that we're going to cut out. So that's the, you'll notice that matches the shape of the little lamello hardware. See how it's clipped at that right edge? Now in the corners where there's that sort of slightly hard edge there, 
we won't be able to clear all the material. So we'll go to the next slide and you'll see a very slight manipulation I did. I just extended that round so that we could clear all the material. I also made it an inside cut. So an inside cut, that means cutting on the inside of the line. So that white area, instead of pocketing, which is kind of a free form cut, which can clear, it's sort of paint by numbers. We can clear all that material out. This cuts very specifically a path that follows that out, that line on the inside of it. Now, I know that my quarter inch cutter basically clears that entire area, so there's no point in combining it with a pocket. The inside cut will remove most of it. It will leave a little nub in the center of these circles, and I can just chisel that off. So I've also added the blue info there, their guides. That's just a note to myself to tell me what depth to cut these to. So 11 millimeters deep is exactly the depth I need to cut these, these pockets to for them to seat properly. So we're going to start with our panel of ply. 4x8, and then one thing that's very important, we'll actually just cut back here. A big part of working with large sheets like this is you'll want to avoid uh, introducing scaling issues to your tape. And what I mean by that is if I was to uh, pull really tight on this tape when I'm laying it out, uh, there's a chance. So just come down here. Now, this is fine, this is kind of straight enough that I can get a, uh, a, a good cut. Now, when I'm scanning this in, if I pull on this really tight, you can literally see the end deforming, like up to probably about an eighth of an inch or something. So I can, I can what that's gonna do is tell Origin that this board is actually smaller than it is, because it, it measures the length of these. So if I'm deforming them by pulling them super tight, I'm misleading origin and adding distortion and issues into my scan. So an important thing to do when you're laying out tape over these distances is just put it down, don't pull on it, and just drop it, you know, make sure you're, you're not adding any lateral force. Uh, so the length of each one of these markers remains at its, you know, the appropriate length that it is on if you were to just press it down like this. So uh, that's, that's an important thing to keep in mind. And beyond that, try to do it consistently across the entire panel. If I have a few that are pulled really tight and a few that are just pressed down uh, with that same approach I just showed you, you will end up with, uh, you add distortion to your, to your work. So that's a, that's a key thing to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is when you're scanning, the goal, we'll actually cut to the screen here, Noah. I'll do just a small example here of uh, some scanning approaches. So new scan. Start the scan. Now, the orientation I'm in when I start the scan is the ori orientation of this whole thing at my maximum zoomed out level. If you see uh, when you zoom out by double clicking on the screen, if you see things rotate in a strange way, just remember it's it's gonna show you the orientation you were in when you started scanning. Now, you should be able to see my hands here. So this area in the front sort of half of the uh, view frustrum there, that sort of area that the camera can see, that's the most accurate area that you're scanning. So I try to move Origin in a way that I image everything from two different angles, uh, in that area, so if that makes sense. So you can see, even though I'm sort of imaging four rows of tape here, uh, I'm gonna go over that and make sure that, you know, each pass includes an extra two rows of that tape. So you can see here, that means this tape is seen from multiple angles, always uh, in that lower half of the scan area. So I'm not gonna do the whole thing now. We've already scanned this, but uh, just, just keep that in mind for your scanning process. The key here is to move smoothly, slowly, make sure you've got enough light, make sure there's no like crazy reflections on your surface. Uh, and if you do that over the entire board, you'll pretty quickly get a, uh, a very accurate uh, scan result. And that'll mean that all of your uh, geometry is going to be much more accurate when you go to cut it. So uh, 
we can get into that in the questions. I'll just take this piece of tape off here that we just added to avoid confusing anyone. And then we'll go back to the slide deck and just walk through the, uh, the process of going through this. So we're going to place our shape and you'll see here we're going to cut those rounded corners that we remember from the tops of the sides first. So we're, what we're doing here is we're only cutting the details that are curved and that a track saw will not be able to cut. So there's a few holes, there's a few rounded corners, there's the little handles, and then there's all the hardware inserts. So then you see, yeah, we add the holes. And then if you look closely, we've added all the inserts for the little metal inserts. One good note here is uh, if you're doing something like this for the first time, do some of the hardware inserts obviously on stock that's similar, but as an off cut. Before you, you know, populate an entire 4x8 panel apply, go and check that, you know, everything you've got, the thickness of the ply is correct and everything mates appropriately. Here we have, we're starting to put the little hardware slots into the, into the panel. And then we'll work our way across the whole thing doing that. It's actually quite quick. I found that I can cut these in one pass because it's kind of an interference fit. They're designed to kind of hammer in. You can afford to be quite bold with how you move through this. As long as you're you know, careful with your motion, you can, you can get these done quite quick. I think this is an example where, say, a, uh, a stubby eight millimeter shank cutter would be pretty great. Maybe even worth looking at one of the roughing bits because we're, you know, the, the, the surface doesn't need to be a clean edge for these. You want that, you know, ribbed friction to hold these in. They're actually, they hold in pretty well regardless. This is where we see some of the key areas of interest. So we've cut in the little hardware. We see that little gray patch. Now we need to mark where we want to align our track saw to. So you can see the digital file is this sort of light green sort of mark here. There's a couple of options here. So we can either do a shallow cut with our cutter as though we were going to cut this out, but we just cut the corners. Now, that gets you a little owl shape. When doing that, make a note with a pencil, I'll show you that in a little bit, of the edge that you wanna cut. So you make sure your kerf is on the right side. That's how we are gonna define this by combining this cut with a pencil mark just to remind you where to cut. And then step around, do the same thing to the, to the other corners. Keep in mind, because we've got tape on this whole surface, we can come back and add these later. Like if we, if we track saw something out and find we've forgotten something, because the tape is still in place, you notice on my completed box over there, I left the tape on. Now that's pretty awesome in that, you know, at any stage I can go back to that. If I omitted something, if I want to make a change, I've still got options. All my file is still accurately located on that. I could take another thousandth of an inch off a particular element if I wanted to. And then, yeah, there's all, all four of those corners clearly identified, meaning I can either track saw the full length. Yeah, so now you can see all the corners mapped out across the whole thing. I hope these are reading clear with internet compression. Then you can start lining up. This is the track saw, by the way, that we looked at, the big aluminium rail. Be careful that you on the correct side. So you put the track on the side that you want to keep, and then you cut in the area that your kerf will be. It becomes second nature pretty quickly, but just something to keep an eye on. Now, if you're feeling confident, the good thing here is with the marks running the entire length, we can now test place this, and we can confirm that these little cuts perfectly align with the edge of our track. Now, if, if there's any discrepancy there, like maybe when you laid out your file, things were in slightly the wrong place, or maybe you distorted your tape or something, that's a good opportunity to roll back and use the smaller track, or just you know cut one at a time. You don't need to gang them all together. Obviously, that's optimal for efficiency, but if there is any question about just how perfectly they align, then do one at a time and you'll get good results like that. So then you can, yeah, start cutting top, bottom. So you can see now we have identified the blue areas that is waste and we've got these big long lengths that we want to keep. We need to be careful with this that we don't cut through, like the, the track saw when you finish cutting, because it's a circular saw, there's a good, you know, four inches or whatever of sort of partially cut material. So don't cut hard up against an edge. See with the gaps here, I've actually left a half an inch between each panel. I mean, this one's designed so it fits pretty well on a uh, four by eight panel. Leaving that half an inch, it leaves the ability for it to be very clear what side of the path you intend to cut. If it got too close together, it could be quite difficult. So we're just, yeah, zipping through, cut, 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 cut. Now, here's where we remove those two pieces and we can cut here 
without the fear of colliding with material we want to keep. So that's just, you know, for people who haven't used a track saw, that's a, a good note to keep an eye on. All done, everything's in order. And then for this particular one, once completing the wooden part of it, we then took the, uh, the, the little eighth inch collet and a very small um, O flute cutter here. So you can see that's a single flute designed for uh, aluminium. So that was for the little inserts in the wheels. Um, so once again, you know, all, yeah, it's hard to see it, sorry. All cut with origin uh, and they seat very nicely and hold this axle, a little stainless steel axle in place. Um, so you can pretty quickly uh, bang that out as well. Now, uh, what we're going to do here is, I'll actually take the small cutter. We've got 25 minutes in. So I'm going to try and get through as much as we can. We'll, we'll cut out one of the uh, edge panels uh, and insert some of the elements and then uh, see how much more we can do. I, I'd like to show you the underside, how the, the wheels drop in there as well. So rather than doing the big long length, we'll put this one aside. So now, uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll do origin stuff first. So we'll bring origin up here. And we can actually cut to this screen now, Noah. So you'll see what I'm talking about with those cuts here. So if I go to my cut screen, uh, I'm performing an air cut here. That's a negative five. So I'm just going to hover above the surface. So this is how I cut those corners. Um, I'll actually do it. Do an actual cut. Uh, this is going to be a little, a little creepy. Um, actually, what do we do? 0.05. Now we got some like sound processing software on here, so this is going to sound silent. It is actually running. I'll turn it on, uh, but this will enable me to talk over it. So we'll see how this works. So this is me marking that in. No, there's no option. So I'm, uh, I'm marking exactly what I want. So. so I don't know if you were able to hear that. I might have been looking up a bit far. Uh, but basically, the goal there was to create a, uh, an edge which we should be able to see here. Yeah, not very clear, but basically I've cut that little slot there, which gives me something to align my track to later. Now, I find it's important to go through and just mark what edge I want to keep or where I want to cut. Um, so yeah, when I do my track saw, I'm gonna be on cutting with the track on this side of the line and I'm going to cut on that side of this line. So uh, just as you go, do that, because uh, it, it can be harder to decode later. Um, on the other side here, there's actually a different strategy uh, that we'll get to later. That's, that's, yeah, it's just important to make notes of what side uh, of that you're cutting on, ultimately, so you don't make mistakes. Now, we'll get into the fun stuff. So I'm going to zoom out so you can see you know, globally what's going on here. So you can see my whole panel scanned in. Uh, you can see all the details ready to go. So often, you know, you, you might want to do these things one at a time, but when it comes to uh, track saw work, uh, it can be much better to get a whole bunch of uh, shapes ready to go. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is uh, when I do things like offsets, if there's a lot of geometry, it's gonna be slightly slower to update. So you're going to want to combine this so that you uh, do all of your roughing passes. So this is a 0.01 offset uh, at once, and then come back and do some finishing passes. So rather than changing back and forth, which is a common thing to do with Origin, you notice uh, changing depth doesn't have to update these paths so it's super fast. But, so this rounded corner, these are examples of areas that the track saw is not going to be able to help us. So we're gonna use Origin to cut this out. So quarter inch deep, 
uh, 0.1 inch offset for the roughing path. And I'm just going to go through and step down and remove this whole edge. Back on. You won't hear this much at all, I don't think. I can do a speech over this. So I'm going to do all of these rounded corners and the handles all in one sitting. You can see Origin is correcting as I move. And then we'll come down to the edge here. Keeping the cables out of the way. Coming down to the very edge. And then we'll round this corner as well. So this is a, uh, once again, quarter inch deep roughing pass. And then we can step over and do things like find the handle. So uh, this is another thing that obviously a track door is no help for. But with Origin, you can zip around here. Yeah, so Sam, maybe you can talk about a little bit, like, what do you preface first? Do you go for all the little holes first, or are you going to the corner? Yeah, so the strategy... Strategy here is uh, to round all the corners. We'll see if we can see them here. Probably will be quite hard with this one. I might bring the uh, the other camera over and just get that to have a closer look. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Sam, so maybe uh, talk a little bit like how do you preface which uh, type of path to cut first? Yeah, so uh, with Origin, always start with uh, the internal geometry. So don't go, I mean, it doesn't matter as much on this because each element is its own sort of self-contained thing with enough tape for me to continue cutting uh, after the fact. But if you're doing something small, uh, always do the interior cuts first, the small geometry, the pockets, uh, and then do the perimeter and release the whole thing. Usually you'll have uh, double-sided tape on the bottom uh, to hold things in place. In this case, we don't need that because we've got, uh, you know, it's, it's, these are large enough elements. But yeah, here you can see I'm doing the, the edges, the rounded corners, and then uh, getting these little handles in. And then I'll do all the little holes for the, uh, for the inserts. And uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna get a whole one of these side panels uh, ready to go. So uh, yeah, so this is the first of three passes to get me down to depth. And then uh, we'll, we'll do the holes in the middle, and then we'll do the track saw at the end to, to join it all together. So this is an, an interesting way where you can, uh, you know, without a big table saw, do a lot of sort of common operations. And even operations like, you know, installing these, uh, there are ways of doing this with a drill. But realistically, these, these are designed with a big CNC in mind. Like people, the $200,000 in installing these, uh, Okay, so I'm going to quickly try and get through some of these cuts. Hopefully you can still hear me. So another round of uh, roughing passes. So I'm just going to quickly blast through this. Uh, And then yeah, and so while, you, while you're cutting there, Sam, maybe I'll off. explain. Yeah. There might be a few people in the session today who actually don't know how Origin works. So maybe while you're cutting these real quick, I'll yeah, exactly. kind of run through that real quick. So, so for those of you who are new here, uh, Shaper Origin is a handheld CNC. It actually uses a computer and a camera to read the tape that you see kind of all over the plywood there to understand its location in the world. That location then is transported into the computer and it actually helps the computer correct your mistakes. So as you're cutting, it's actually reading where you're at and trying to figure out where you're supposed to be and then making that change with the spindle. So the spindle is actually on a kind of a 3D printer axis that moves to correct the mistakes and to really get you as super close. So we, we really like to think of this as like a kind of a robotic uh, prosthesis for your hands, which makes you even better than you can be in the real world. You know, a lot of people spend a lot of time learning how to use routers. They're used on a lot of types of jobs. This router is really about getting, you get it pretty close to how, uh, where you want to cut and then Origin will actually move it closer. So we have about a half an inch of corrective range and you'll see kind of as Sam's cutting, 
you may see the spindle kind of moving separately from the base, and that's actually the auto correction method. Um, and if you know what you're cutting is even like really small, like these cabaneos, you don't really have to move Origin that much. You'll actually see in a second when he starts cutting these that Origin's doing a lot of the the movement for you um, with those smaller pieces. Knocking out all the, the, the details here. I'm doing my finish pass now. You see, I set my uh, dimension to uh, offset to zero, which means I'm cutting at the final intended dimension. So I don't have this one taped down. This way it doesn't come kind of loose. I'm going to fill and order the last of it to keep it in place. I'm going to finish up this edge here. You notice we're getting all the precision of origin. We can go and start doing uh, little details. So, in here, for example, we can helix this circle. So, this is for one of the inserts. So, I'm going to set this to 13.5 millimeters. So, we can combine uh, units. And you notice that because I'm working in a, uh, an imperial project, it's going to get inches. Now, this is cool. I just tap the button. Uh, and it's going to helix down, it's going to spiral down, removing the appropriate amount of material uh, super rapidly. So, uh, yeah, there's our little hole. Uh, I'm going to intentionally leave out this next one, and we'll come back to it later. So, uh, yeah, this, these are the little paths of describing, if you can do the screen now, uh, for the actual hardware in the so, uh, I'm going to do the 11 millimeters. And these are kind of, uh, heavier cuts. I'm going to cut these. See the little areas in the middle that are left? Those are, uh, those are going to have to be chiseled out. So this enables me to do, you know, one pass. This is a heavier pass than you would ordinarily do. But because I know this is not like a finished edge that anyone's ever going to see, I just want to get through this quickly. Yeah, and Sam, just time check we have about three minutes until the Q&A starts, so. I'm going to do all of these then. we just use a little uh, detail here. Quickly, set this up for... Uh, yeah, and one thing, one little trick to note when you're doing this with track saw and origin is you don't actually have to cut the corners all the way. You only need to cut the initial little bit. So, you know, a lot of times you'll end up doing, uh, you know, cutting in a, a text element in the middle of a piece of wood, and then you want to cut a rectangle out. You can just kind of tag really quick the, uh, the corners at a really small depth. You know, you don't have to go deep at all, and then you can just cut all the way through it with a track saw. So that'll save some time there. Get us this camera not. So what I've done here is uh, I've aligned. You may not be able to see it perfectly, but as we showed you in the slides, uh, I've aligned this exactly. Yeah, I've aligned this exactly to where we uh, where we've marked out with that cut. So I'm just going to uh, get this up and running and. Make sure we're properly aligned here. So we probably won't get the, through this whole project, but uh, you can see those are you know really clear markers for where to uh, where to align this. And then come back. Make sure you start in the center. There you go. So we had a little interruption to the stream. I'm just going to go and show you the remainder of the process to assemble this box. Basically, it's rinse and repeat of exactly what I'm going to do now. So back at my home, so you're looking at just one panel here, and we're going to install the little inserts, the little uh, threaded inserts that come with the pack. And there's an included little tool. So these just go in sub flush.
So you do that to the remainder of the holes and then the hardware, we have our little slot prepared with Origin. They just sit in like that and then just take a dead blow hammer. There you have it. The process to create this whole box is basically just rinse and repeat that. So take the track saw, cut everything out, then go through and install all of this hardware like so, and it'll just come together. So, you know, we'll load this up on Shaper Hub and you can make this, but hopefully these principles or the, the general approach is compelling for you to use in your own projects. Then we just take this whole thing and it lines up perfectly with the base here. Just sort of get it in approximately the right place. And our uh, hex wrench works. So that, you know, already is firming up. As mentioned previously, I can come back and cut out the other hardware because my tape's still in place, which gives me a lot of flexibility. And it's just a great way of getting the best out of the track saw and the best out of Origin. So this is a little detail from the underside. This pocket is part of the reason why we have such low profile wheels here. Another little detail that's awesome, building on Origin's ability to precisely align these things. I've added little, what are these, 16th inch Dowrin pins, and that helps me align my wheel to this, this hole here. So then I can confidently slot it together and know that it's always going to run true. I'm not going to have, have to worry about, am I you know, a few millimeters off or at a weird angle? You know, these edges are perfectly aligned with this edge because I was able to cut the whole thing on the base using Origin. That's just a little detail I wanted to share as well. Uh, I will gladly talk anyone through any of the details or techniques they're interested in. Feel free to reach out on the community forums. Yeah, hopefully this is a fun one for others to have a shot at.